Tournament Center here at Pro Tour Dragons at Top Kier. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm here with Ian Duke, and we are here to talk to you today about Jeskai Tokens. It's a little something different. What we're going to do is kind of take, like, if you took a Venn diagram of all the standard decks in the yeah. room, these are the cards that would appear in the wedge that was Jeskai Sort of like tokens. a composite deck list in yes. a way, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's take a look at what's going on in Jeskai Tokens. So come over here and start talking to me about Dragon Fodder. This card is basically displaced Hordling Outburst. Yeah, so it's it's a really important upgrade here. Hordling Outburst, the issue with it is there are so many three drops in the deck already. You're leaning hard on Jeskai Ascendancy and Goblin Rabble Master, among others. And Dragon Fodder lets you step that down one notch and fill out your two drop slot. Also notably, it's a lot easier on your mana base here with only a single red in the casting cost, whereas Hordling Outburst is asking for double red. And then the, these decks are already playing Raise the Alarm. Yep, instant speed version of the same thing, a staple in the deck, I think an auto include us for four of. Right, now one, one of the new toys, and we're gonna talk about some of the other new toys, uh, you know, Dragon Fodder, obviously a reprint, but this is, this is a card created for this. Talk to me about Secure the Wastes, X, one, one white warrior creature tokens on the battlefield, instant speed, what are you, th you're, you're R&D, I can, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> well, this is just a hugely flexible card and that's really what it offers to the deck. We talked about Dragon Fodder lowering the curve and uh, easing up your mana a little bit. Secure the Waste just lets you fill in a quality card um, wherever on the curve you want, whether you're casting it for one or two or later in the game making five, six tokens, it just fills in your curve wherever you need it and at instant speed as well. Right, and, and again, something, you know, when you talk about the prowess-like ability of Jeskai Ascendancy, even casting it for W yeah, can, can trigger your, uh, your Jeskai Ascendancy, let you draw a card and give you some, maybe save your guys from, from a spell. Yep. Let's, let's talk about the, the last of the token makers here, Goblin Rabble Master. It's been a staple since it was introduced in M15. Yeah, this is a card that can just win the game on its own if unchecked, and that's really the power of it. Um, now that Dragon Fodder is in and you've uh, eased up your three drop slot, Rabble Master can really shine even more than it has before. Um, comes down on turn three, threatens to take over the game, um, forces your opponent to have a removal spell at the ready or else they're in big trouble. So, Jeskai tokens, but you know what? We've really only seen red and white. Uh, let's take a look at where the blue really comes into play here. Jeskai's even in the name, it's the Jeskai Ascendancy. This has been just one of, we just saw it in a combo deck that's, that's dedicated right. to just playing Jeskai Ascendancy. What, what is this card doing in this deck? Is this a glorified crusade? Is it a combo piece? What is it? It's kind of a little bit of everything. I mean, Jeskai Ascendancy, a hugely powerful card. It's been making waves ever since it de debuted in Cons of Tarkir. This is the deck that uses the card, I think, to its utmost, and this is sort of the deck that R&D expected Jeskai Ascendancy to show up in. So less so in these combo decks that are winning the game in one turn, and more so in the decks that can really make use of every aspect of the card. Being a glorious anthem for your team, drawing you into more gas, um, untapping your creatures as surprise blockers at instant speed. So this deck really just takes advantage of all facets of this or, card. Or even letting you use your creatures very efficiently, right? Like you have two dragon tokens and two soldier tokens and a Jeskai Ascendancy play, stoke the flame some giant thing out of the way using convoke draw untap yep. your team as now they're all two twos and and the key to this card is um, Jeskai is all about playing a mixture of creatures and non-creature spells. And by combining this with cards like Dragon Fodder, Raise the Alarm, Secure the Wastes, those are spells that are both creatures and non-creatures at the same time. So it lets you leverage both They're aspects. kind of like the dual lands of spells. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at some of the uh, Jeskai tokens uh, instants that you're gonna play with, uh, Wild Slash, yeah, uh, Wild big Flash, and Fate a Hallmark card because it only costs one red mana. It's one of the few uh, tournament quality cards in standard right now that costs one mana. And uh, that's really important for catching up from behind or leveraging an advantage. So you can cast this and another spell in one turn and really catch up on the board. Importantly, it also answers Goblin Rabble Master, which is a right. staple not only in this deck, but in several other sure. decks in the format. Uh, Stoke the Flames, we just talked about the synergy uh, with Stoke the Flames, the ability to convoke it, yep. untap the creatures you just convoked with a bonus. Yep. And just being one of the premium removal spells, get something like a course of Crufix out of the way, can you know, can kill a whisper word elemental. Yeah, other other tricks too. You can use it to stop yourself from having to attack with your goblin rapple master and save it in play for to get another token and wait till a more opportunity turn to attack. Sweet. Uh, this is one of the big new cards. Talk, yeah. talk to us about anticipate. So in a deck that relies on combining 
creatures, non-creature spells, getting your Jeskai Ascendancy in play. Anticipate is really like glue that holds it all together. So um, you can cast this on turn two. We were talking about the deck is a little bit starved for two drops prior to Dragons of Tarkir. This is another quality addition that you can add there. But really, it just smooths out your draw at any point in the game and helps you find all the different pieces of your combinations. Well, walk me through the timing. If I have a Jeskai Ascendancy in play, I cast Anticipate. Uh, what, how, how is that going to work out? Yeah, so either you can save this during your opponent's turn to surprise, untap your, your blockers, um, or you can cast it on your turn, anticipate into another spell, cast that, trigger Jeskai Ascendancy again. Also, if you have the Ascendancy in play, you can cast Anticipate and loot first, giving you more information about what you want to take from the Anticipate. It just works wonders. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh... Uh, Valor Stance, uh, again, another another big card from Favor Forge. It's still making its presence known. Yep, talk about flexibility as we were before. This is a card that just, you know, has a, a number of different uses, can take out problematic creatures like Siege Rhino, Corsair of Crufix, can protect your Goblin Rabble Master. Uh, just really quality card. Right, your, your opponent's put into a position where they need to chump the Rabble Master a lot of the time because right. it's so big and then it's indestructible. Getting another attack in with it is just unbelievable. Uh, so we, we, a lot of these cards, I mean, we saw the Anticipate and the, uh, you know, the Dragon Fodder and the Secure the Waste, but, you know, what are the new toys that we get to play with in this uh, in this deck? What, what, are the, what are the, oh, actually, we just have more spells. Uh, Treasure Cruise, obviously. Yep. Uh, Disdainful Strokes. Uh, you know, popular counter. Yeah, these are a lot of decks. All options in various numbers. Maybe you'll play two treasure cruises to refill a little bit. Disdainful stroke to throw your opponent off balance or counter something like end hostilities. But roast is a big new addition from Dragons of Tarkir. Um, this really gives red the answer that it was starved for for so long. To take out things like Corsair of Crufix, Siege Rhino, Pelucrimos, Grimaz, whatever is standing in your way. Yeah, and what's important about this is it sort of serves the role that previously only black based removal spells could do. And, you know, Jeskai, its mana is already in three different directions. Um, you couldn't oh, no add dragons. black to a, to a deck like this. <laughs> sure. Um, so Roast is really like filling in for things like Hero's Downfall in this deck. Okay. So that's one of the new toys, but here are some things that you, you know, we've seen in Jeskai tokens this weekend uh, talk to us about, I think, one of my favorite cards in the set. Yeah. Nar Nar Transcendent. Yeah, so Nar our set, really interesting card here. Um, the thing that stands out the most to me about this card is it's just enormous starting loyalty. Right. So you can play Narset even on a board where maybe you're behind or you can't defend her that well, and your opponent has a hard decision about do I attack in a Narset and sink, you know, seven plus damage into her um, and maybe run into some bad blocks and so forth, or do I just let this powerful Planeswalker stay on the board, potentially drawing you into more non-creature spells, finding your Jeskai Ascendancy, or this second ability, really, really interesting with um, all sorts of tricks like removal spells taking out multiple creatures um, or even burn spells going to the face something like stoke right. the flames okay uh ojitai exemplar is not necessarily a card i was expecting to see in the just gay token set but it's out there on the floor yeah what, what, what is what is this card uh what does this card do i mean it's a, obviously a big body for a reasonable casting cost but yeah, we've talked about flexibility time and again with this deck. This is just one of the most flexible cards in here. I really see this card at its best against aggressive decks. Um, tapping creatures and gaining lifelink are two of the most important abilities on this card here. Um, but also the third ability can um, uh, sort of allow you to dodge removal spells as well. So this is a card that if you can stick it against a lot of decks, it's a huge, huge headache. So. Okay. Finally, Dragonlord Urgitai. I'm seeing this card in a wide swath of archetypes this second ability when it deals combat damage to a player looking at the top three cards of your library just like basically impulse with i mean anticipate it's with anticipate, wings yeah, yeah exactly. anticipate with wings we got to retrain ourselves as older magic players we always want to say right. impulse but anticipate is the new hotness <laughs> uh dragonlord ojitai this card's just phenomenal. Yeah, talk about, talk about a headache. I mean, Hexproof, as long as it's untapped, that's just incredibly hard for a lot of decks to deal with. You can leave Ojutai back as a blocker um, and, you know, sleep safely and soundly knowing that your opponent isn't going to be able to get it out of the way and you'll always have it there to block. And then when you're ready, uh, maybe once your mana untaps next turn, you can protect it with something like a Valorous Stance. You can go on the offense and just have an endless stream of action um, and clock your opponent really fast. I mean, five power hits really hard. I interestingly, with Jeskai Ascendancy, <laughs> you, you get to, you can uh, have all these ways to untap it. Right, it's sort of like a to make your own pristine angel yeah. kind of a deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can give it hexproof uh, in response to Jeskai Ascendancy. Let's take a look at the, the mana base 
that uh, you know you have in here. I mean, obviously the three basic lands, but Flooded Strand is the is the go-to fetch land. Yeah, it can fuel things like Treasure Cruise, as we all know, um, allowing you to delve. Um, pretty straightforward here so far. What I want to take a look at on the next slide, actually. Yeah, well, there's a wide wide range of lands. Mystic Monastery is your your dream open, I assume. Right, and what's interesting here is that. With the switch from Hordling Outburst to Dragon Fodder, it eases up your mana requirements a little bit, which may allow you to um, find room for more temples in your deck. The temp temples being really important for smoothing out your draw and finding all the pieces you need of your combination to get going here. So Temple of Triumph, Temple of Epiphany, obviously the uh, the Pain Lands. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, all in all, where, where do you think uh, Jeskai Tokens is positioned for this weekend? It's a really powerful deck. Um, it's got some new options that are really hard to deal with in terms of uh, Planeswalker and Narset, Ojutai Exemplars uh, being great against aggressive decks, Dragonlord Ojutai giving everyone a headache. Um, it's really a deck that attacks from a lot of different angles. It has a lot of different flexibility. And depending on what a player expects out of the rest of the metagame, he or she can really tune his or her Jeskai uh, Tokens deck to defeat that expected metagame. Okay. So as, as the calendar turns from Friday to Saturday, once we get to Saturday, we're going to present a text feature we're going to show you some of the players playing Jeskai Tokens who've made it through to day two mm -hmm. and provide you with a couple different lists and show you where these cards sort out into actual practical 75-card deck lists. Sounds great. For Ian Duke, this is Brian David Marshall signing off from the Tournament Center.